and we record. Okay. Great. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, Saul. Nice to see you. I mean, I would have preferred the whole thing to be a physical contact, face to face, you know, Gali Mulla types. But nevertheless, <laughs> we've managed with what we have. So, welcome to this uh, uh, the series of Excellent Speaks. We wanted to just bring in a little bit of uh, consciousness in, in uh, you know, people about how this whole pandemic has featured and how we need to move to the next step. You know, instead of being afraid and sitting back and, you know, waiting for things to happen, we need to be probably taking a step and see how we can go forward. So that's why I, uh, we thought of having you as part of this little discussion where, you know, people who have been in the field for so long and been excellent at what they do, if they speak, it gives so much more value to the whole thing. So the first query I have for you, Song. Uh, Song, you would like to say something before we start? No, no, no. Only, you know what? Pleasure to be always communicating with you and pleasure to start this excellent series uh, of, of conferences and, and discussions that we're having. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, yep, I think very pertinent topic to be discussing how uh, organizations are shaping up in the pandemic. Yeah, so my first question is a very, very, I mean, generic question, which uh, probably everyone is asking. How are organizations affected by this pandemic crisis? So if you could give us a, a view about that, that would be interesting for us. So, you know, our, our economy has been impacted by many other factors in the past. The uniqueness of COVID-19 is that it's impacted lives as well as livelihoods. And I think we've had in the past, like, like the 2008 crisis was more livelihoods, you know, and, and I'm sure that it had a corollary impact on lives. But this one has a direct impact on both lives and livelihoods. That's something striking me. In, in, in how the pandemic has impacted. And having that, it's a far reaching and has caused unprecedented changes in our society, right? And you know, I just go back and when we started this back in February, many of us were really apprehensive. How would people deal with such a scenario? You know, will they be comfortable staying back? And how long can they persist with this? But humans always surprise each themselves, each other and themselves. You know, it seems that people have learned to not only cope with it, but have been creative. And so have organizations only. Yeah. Uh, you know, manufacturers are grappling with supply chain issues, you know, because it's all been disrupted. Yeah. You know? uh, financial institutions are really waiting for the next bailout. You know, they're thinking, when will I get bailed out? Because uh, consumer sentiment is, is at such a low that you know, they are, they're not able to cope up with what's coming in. And, and then healthcare organizations are grappling with, there's a decrease in budgets from government. So overall, as I said, lives and livelihoods is how, you, how people need to look at this impact of the pandemic and give it that gravity. Once you give it that gravity, I guess the actions that organizations will take um, are going to be different from what trying to think it as an ad hoc, or a, or a one time or a small time, uh, I, th I, think, I think that's it. So more or less, I think organizations, lastly, I would say organizations needs to understand that in this context, compliance and regulations still exist. So whatever they're doing short term, whatever they're trying to bend the corners in trying to run their businesses, I think compliance and regulations are going to still be there. So, so yep, time to ponder, time to think and time to act, yep. So, okay, so I, I'm going to you know, draw from the fact that you, you are an expert on strategy and uh, business. Okay, so I, I'm going to ask you this question. Uh, what is the possible strategy that has to emerge within organizations to, for them to, you know, kind of come out of from this, from this crisis situation? What should they do? That, 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 that's interesting. Uh, it's interesting because I'm trying to give a perspective. We don't understand the pandemic. Only you and me don't. And trust me, I also came to know that many world bodies for health, they also don't. Everybody is making, you know, they're thinking on their feet right now and trying to take it. So that we don't know, we don't know, we don't understand the problem. Yeah, yeah. And the issue is that because we don't understand the problem, strategy has to be seen in the shorter term context. Yeah. It can't be five year planning, three year planning, two year planning. Now, right now, I think shorter term planning has to be strategy. Yeah, yeah. Now, add to that, we don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know how long this problem is going to last. So, I think it's time now that instead of just reacting, it's time to take some decisive action as well. Because we don't know how long. Reaction would have been okay if we know it's going to last till October 2020. 
So yeah. we don't. So I think it's it's better to. So a strategy of for action yeah. is where I think my first point would be. You know. No, any 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 comments there? No, yeah, that's what even I was thinking. You know, like a short term thingy, like a flood situation which happened in Chennai, or a you know a, a Varda, uh, you know storm thingy. You know, that's, so they all knew it was not going to last more than three to four days. You know, so that was completely different from a you know pandemic related to health, which is affecting uh, you know uh, companies like this. Yeah, so that was my thought when you said. Yes, absolutely, only bang on in those situations people move to a plan b or a plan c so they do bcp yeah. but in this time you've got to make a plan a for the next couple of years and it's got to stick you've got to act with that and 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 one thing is very clear you know the lens with which organizations create a strategy you've got to view it like i i read a very interesting quote it's called the dragonfly lens you know that's how dragonflies see. Dragonflies have an almost 360 degree view when they see things, right? If you look at a fly's eye, you know that's the that's the lens with which organizations need to see this, you know. And and they've got to tap into collective intelligence. You know, they they can't stick to their own whatever they know may not be the right thing right now. So they've got to tap into collective intelligence when they draw that strategy. Wow. And um, yeah, they actually saw this drag dragonfly thing. Giving it the 360 upper, that's very interesting. Actually, so I have two questions related to that. Okay, number one uh, is the fact that okay, what what should the future methodology be for organizations, both in terms of their work and culture? And the second part is more something that is very very probably passionate that you are about it. This employability, you know, what do their employees need to have? For them to be a part of organizations in the future. So that's the two parts of this question that I have for you. <laughs> okay. Now let's let's get to the first one. Could yeah. you frame your first question yeah. again, please? The future, the future. Uh, what how do you perceive perceive the work and culture of organizations will be in the future? And uh, giving it okay, you finish the first part, then I'll come to the second part. <laughs> The reason I said repeat the question is I, I would like that to be there in the air for some time. The future of work. Okay. And I think the reason that's important is it was a hot topic for me even before the pandemic struck. But the reason why it was a hot topic was because our world was being disrupted by technology. So automation was almost getting into every single sphere of our lives and we were getting dominated by it. So one could clearly see the signals that the future of work dependent on automation, on adapting technology and digitization. The context was very, very different. People could take a stepwise approach and still achieve an automation journey within a certain period of time. Yeah. I think now what the pandemic has done is made the topic hotter. So it's, it's, the, it's like the Chennai hot, hotter, hottest. It's, it's made this particular topic, you know, actually hotter by suggesting that uh, you don't have that time that you thought you had. So please accelerate your plans. Please accelerate your plans. Okay. So automation, digitization, digital transformation has become the way to go in a much shorter period of time. That changed the future of work and only very important careers of people, careers of professionals. Okay. And, and you know what online approaches has altered the retail landscape. Just look at the retail landscape, right? You know, the, the shops, the brick and mortar shops, they were disappearing slowly, but that pace has accelerated like hell, right? Any comments there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, in fact, you know, when you talked about the fact that this is something that has started much earlier than the actual pandemic thingy uh, was, you know, it kind of reminded me of the fact that we always kept the, uh, you know, sanitizer bottle in the car. So whenever we used to go for a meeting, we used to, you know, come back and use the sanitizer first. But now what has happened is, whenever you enter, there's a sanitizer. <laughs> so you can go in and sanitizer, come out sanitizer. So the whole thing, like you said, is accelerated into a different level. Quite true, quite true. No, and, 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 and one has to, I'll just give you a couple of domain uh, inputs, you know, where I see, you know, so 
technologies like blockchain have altered trade and how supply chain does. So though, though we know manufacturers supply chain has been badly disrupted, the way for them to go is not what they used to do earlier. The way for them is to adapt a new technology like blockchain. Okay. Electric vehicles, EV has completely changed the way auto automotive industry works. You know, and I don't know, Matlab, I don't know whether you're reading, but the government today is mandating organizations to come up with their EV norms, as well as a commitment to how many vehicles they'll produce in the next five years. So these are huge steps in terms of how things are getting disrupted. Again, I reiterate, this was happening earlier, but it's now hotter and will get hotter, you yeah. know? And I think that that list is very long as to how, how industry, you know, uh, I perceive the way uh, future of work is going to go. Yeah. And it's very important for people to acknowledge this. Listeners, please acknowledge this because this doesn't impact just the organization's work. It impacts our careers, how professionals deliver their work and how they are re seen, how skillful they are. I think that whole thing, uh, goes. and a classic example Luni, is that remote working, you know, almost overnight organizations moved into a remote working space, you know, work from home. And that, that brings me to the next part, you know, about the second half that I, that I told this, you know, this question that splits into about the people themselves, the employees that we're talking about, or professionals, like you say, uh, what should be their, you know, skills? Uh, how will they become more employable? Uh, how will they become relevant to the organization with so many changes happening? What should they do? Great question. Relevant question and very mostly probably the most important question. Uh, my, the way that I view this, as soon as you ask this question, there are two bubbles that form. One bubble says organization one and the other bubble says organization two. This organization is hierarchical in nature. This organization is networked in nature. This organization has got centralized leadership, a binary tree. This has got distributed leadership. This is tightly coupled. This is loosely coupled, but it's still there. This is completely on specialists. And these are cross-trained generalists. Now tell me, Unni, which one do you think, which organization, which bubble do you think is more relevant for today? <laughs> the answer is very obvious, right? And the fact that traditional institutions and organizations are, you know, on the downward trend is very clear, isn't it? All over the place. <laughs> yeah, you can't be policy and procedure driven and make that the business. You've got to be guided by simple, but yet flexible rules, you know. So, so I think the reason I started off with this on that question is because if organizations are becoming like this, the individuals can't become something else. Absolutely. Yeah. So they've got to network. They've got to be able to follow distributed leadership. They've got to be loosely coupled. They've got to be a dispersed workforce. They've got the ability to work in a dispersed manner. They've got to be multi-skilled and cross generalist. So, you know, it's so related that when I took the example of the two organizations, you've got to be clever enough and intelligent enough to know which organization, if you couple with, is a future more secure. This decision, if not wisely taken, uh, and unless they navigate this particular journey, many professionals are going to struggle with it. That, that's my feeling. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. So, uh, while I'm coming to the close of these things, if you wanted to keep it in that 15 minute zone, you know, but some, I, I think there's a very important question that I want to ask you. Uh, uh, what, what are you doing these days? I mean, I know you bring in a, add a lot of value to organizations. So I just want you to just spend a little time and tell us what are the things that you're involved with nowadays? Uh, so that, you know, we, we, we are aware that, you know, how Samitra is, you know, adding value to organizations. What do you do? So, uh, you know, over the last 20 years, I've been associated with two large uh, multinational banks and I've created, you know, shared service centers for them. I've built few large organization teams and functions. What they did was, it gave me a huge amount of learning. So my learning curve was extremely steep while I was working in my corporate. And I think I made that, of, that fulcrum of how I work. If I didn't learn, that job didn't seem as interesting for me. So, so one could call it, I'm an eternal learner. You know, I, I, you know I'm like a sponge who kind of just, just soaks in uh, the, the knowledge that, 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 that is around me. So that is number one. As I did that, I, I also learned that I had reached a particular inspiration level where I knew my next aspiration lay in helping organizations 
embed a few of the things that I had learned and also in the process of learning and help them meet their goals. So August last year, I decided to embark on my own. And right now I'm associated with a few organizations. One of them is definitely yours. Thank you very much, Unni. Great to be associated with Excel and, and trying to see how, how we can take it forward. There. So Unni, this is the thing that I'm doing. I'm helping a fintech organization in the UK set up their footprint in India. That is also something that I'm doing. So these are very exciting times. Trust me, you know, th this is a fascinating period of my career. Why I ask the question, Song? Because it takes a hell of a lot for someone uh, with your caliber uh, stepping out on their own. It takes, uh, you know, raw courage, I would say, you know, like a 4G thingy, you know, facing a bullet kind of thing. You know, it takes raw courage to step out and be on your own. Uh, no, the point is that you'll probably add a hell of a lot more value to other organizations instead of being in one organization, which I think is great. So that's the reason I asked you this question. You know, it takes takes that much for you to step out and do it. I'm sure you're going to do a great job and we are glad that you're part of the whole thing. Thank you very Thank you much. Very much. Uh, for this wonderful session, I think it was a, it was an eye opener not only for the people who are listening, and I think it's for me also the little inputs we have been, of course, having conversations. But uh, when you speak, uh, you know, like this, when I'm asking a specific question and you're, you know, getting into the details of it, it sounds so much more, you know, relevant and, uh, and you know, important to you know share with people. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be on your show. Yeah, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you so much.